doing. Well, this is not, I have you like tilted up, so this isn't like a really flattering <laughs> way to vlog tonight. I'm so exhausted. Um, but Alex is taking a shower and I have mud down the back of my legs, so I can't like get on the bed or anything and we just ordered room service. So he's taking a shower and he's gonna get out because the room service is gonna be about 35 minutes and then I'm gonna take a shower and then we're gonna eat and then we're gonna go to bed because we are exhausted and we are going to the festival tomorrow. For the last day, we're gonna try to go over there a little bit earlier because um, I love Nora and Pure, and Alex loves Nora and Pure, but I really love Nora and Pure, and she's playing um, at 3.45 tomorrow, plus the festival ends a little bit earlier, it ends at 11 um, tomorrow night, so it'll be an earlier night. I, uh, I made it. Oh my, I didn't think I was going to. My feet um, were actually not bad at all. Let me take this wristband off. Um, My feet are not bad at all. I wore these black Nike running shoes that I've had forever. I just kind of at the last minute, I was like, should I bring these or should I bring some other like shoes that are a little bit cuter? And I was like, no, comfort is more important. And so I brought these black Nike running shoes and like Alex's feet, he wore like Chuck Taylor's tonight. His feet are killing him. Um, but he soaked his shoes yesterday. Well, my shoes were wet when I put them on today, but they're dry now from dancing and stuff, which is kind of funny. But anyway, um, so yeah, so we had a great time tonight. They extended the festival an hour. It was supposed to be over at midnight tonight, but because it shut down earlier last night, they let it go another hour, so it went to one o'clock. So right now, it is like, it's like 20, I think 20, 25 after one. I mean, we're literally a five minute walk from the festival, which is really, really nice. We were standing there and the last DJ tonight that we saw was David Guetta and I love David Guetta and so does Alex. And so I was like looking, I looked at my phone cause we were like dancing and stuff. And um, it was like 20 till one. And I was like, okay. Cause I had to go to the bathroom really bad, but here's the thing. So to get down in front where we were dancing, cause there's like, you can go up to like the, the VIP area or you can like go down in front. And then there's like all these table services, like all the clubs down here, um, like Space and Eleven, they all have like tables that they reserve for people and then like famous rich people, you know, they have all like their tables and stuff. So they're in between, but you have to wait in line to get down to the front. Well, the first time we got down there real easily and I can't remember who we were listening to. Oh, Griffin, because Alex really wanted to hear this DJ called Griffin that he really likes. I feel like this is really bad out of focus. I don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't see. So we're just, tonight you're gonna get what you get. You don't throw a fit, like my mother-in-law says, because I wasn't even gonna vlog, but I thought, well, Alex is, I just took my socks off too. <laughs> I was like, Alex is taking a, uh, a shower, so there's no reason that I can't vlog. And I'm trying to vlog as much as I can because I love doing the vacation vlogs because it's a way for me to kind of like look back to and remember these things, you know? Oh, I wanted to bring my phone out here because I was looking at my steps. <laughs> this is when you know you're getting old, is when you look at your steps at a music festival. So yesterday, we left there at, so on a day that I take a walk, like an hour and a half, two hour walk, I know this is not a lot of steps for some people, but for me, that when I'm rather sedentary and I don't leave the house, when I walk, my steps are between like 10 and like 11,000 steps. That's when I take like an hour and a half walk. Um, yesterday, my steps were, like 12,900 or something like that. And I looked, we were walking from one stage to another stage. <laughs> like I said, this is when you know you're old. You're a music festival and you're looking at how many steps. I could care less about steps. And then Alex was like, you know, like on your phone, you can see, I, now I know why people wear the watches because you can get your steps in like as soon as you put your watch in anyway. So, cause I don't always carry my phone with me everywhere, you know? So we're walking back over and I was like, my legs were like, my knee was kind of hurting a little bit and it made me think of walking. And then I was like, Alex was like, oh, you should have brought your brace down here. I'm like, I probably should have, but I wouldn't have worn it anyway. <laughs> That's just the truth. I was gonna save this for a drama video, but I'm gonna save it for now because some of these girls, I just have to tell you, there was these girls that were standing in front of us and I had posted this thing tonight because, okay, I posted this thing on my Instagram and somebody had put like something up about Bethany Frankel and they said she's 53 and she was in a bikini somewhere like in Australia and she looked like half the age, she looked half her age or something, you know? And 
so I don't know why that always irritates me when people say that. Because I'm just somebody that's like all about like owning your age. Like I, I, I don't understand the point of like lying about. I mean, I've had friends that do it, and I've met like when I was growing up. You know, my mom's friends and stuff would lie about their age, but I don't understand it. It's like just own your age, like whatever you are. You know, be proud of it that you're still here. You know, right? And so I like put this post up on Instagram. I like wrote it out, and I was like, whatever age you are, you know. And I said I'm having half the fun at I'm having more fun now at 51. Trust me that I was at 25. And that's the truth. I mean, that really is the truth. Like, I'm living such a great life today at 51, you know? And trying to make the most of each and every day. But these girls were in front of us. Real sweet girls. But they were super cute, you know? And, I mean, they have amazing bodies. And each these girls were like... They kept on, like, saying stuff about their butts. Like, their butts looked fat. And so we started talking to these girls. And this one girl was like... Yeah, like I want a BBL, and I was like, oh, I heard they're kind of dangerous. I wasn't getting into all of it, you know. With <laughs> we're at a music festival, it's like during the break in between DJs, and I was like, I said, I don't. You guys are so critical of yourselves. Like, you guys look beautiful, you know. And they were like, oh, thank you so much. You guys were such a cute couple, and they were so nice to us. And so then we were like dancing and stuff, and I thought, you know. Here's the truth. You want know, my truism for the day? Remember how I said I'm just starting at 52, I was going to do like a, a thought for the day or a truism for the day? Here's the truth. Peter Ron's truism, okay? At 51 years old, you might be enjoying your life more than you did at 25. You might be having more fun than you did at 25. You might not. I don't know. But I am, you know? Um, there's a lot of things that I think are better past 50. Like, I was so worried about turning 50, but I love getting older. I really do, you know? And um, there's so many good things that come along with it, but the one thing is this, and you all know I'm not the king of working out, so let's just not even play that game, but like, there is no amount of squats in the world that you can do. <laughs> this is the truth. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. There are no amount of squats in the world that you can do. I don't care if you were going to the gym seven days a week. I have never seen a 50 plus year old unless they've had some kind of plastic surgery, and I don't dog people for doing whatever they want to do, right? But your ass is never going to look the same as it did at 25. That's just the truth, okay? You hit like 40 and it just that stuff just falls, right? I used to have such a perky butt. And I mean, I don't know. I mean, I still don't have a bad butt. But it's, you know, flatter. It just falls to the ground. That stuff just falls to the ground. It just does. You're never going to have the same butt you did at 25, right? And I was sitting there, I was thinking about it. And I was like, and you know what? At 70, I ain't going to have the butt that I have now. So I better appreciate and love the butt that I have now. I better not be too energetic because my friend Valerie texted me today and she said, you were like, uh, you were uh, pretty uh, alive last night on your vlog. Y'all must have had fun at that at the, at the festival last night. <laughs> I'm like so like full of, what is it? The, is it the endorphins from like dancing? I danced all night long tonight. So this is the deal. So we split our time between these two different stages, like the main stage, and then there's this place called the resistance stage. And the resistance stage has a lot of DJs, like they usually have Carl Cox, who I love, and has been around for, you know, I mean, he, he's as old as I am. He's fantastic, but Carl Cox is not here this year. So it's a lot of like smaller DJs. And it's very kind of like loungy house music, which I love, but I don't know these DJs. My husband, he knows all these DJs. So we went over there and we heard I can't remember what the name of this DJ was. It made me think of a vintage clothing store. Vintage culture or vintage, I don't know. They were really good though. They were very funk. Like it was like funk music. It was really fun. And so we went back and forth, but when we went back to the main stage, because we wanted to hear Martin Garrix and David Guetta, because they were the last two. And uh, when we tried to go down in front the first time, it was like, they weren't letting anybody in. They were at capacity and it was like, and that's like where you're like, you know, you're sitting on the same level as everybody that's, like, on the ground, you know? And so, but you're, like, guarded, and you can, like, listen. But there were no, I have to be honest with you, usually the reason why we get VIP is so I can have a place to sit down. I pulled a trash bag out from underneath the trash. I sat down on the ground like because my legs were killing me so bad. So, anyway, so we go upstairs. Well, it's, like, ten people back. You can't see the stage. You can hear two stages. People are yelling on the stage, yelling down there. And so it was so hard to hear, and I thought, and, and Alex said, he wanted to hear David Guetta, but he was like, I don't really care about Martin Garrix, I would have stayed at the resistance stage. And I thought, just let him go back to the resistance stage, and you walk back to the hotel, and just leave early tonight. And I didn't want to leave early, I wanted to, like, make it the whole night, right? So I said, well, I'm going to go down to the bathroom, because you have to go down to the bathroom, then you have to go back up to the end, it's this whole ordeal, right? So I said, I'm going to go down to the bathroom, 
And while I was down there, I was like checking out, because it's like, you go out this gate and then in another gate to go around in front. And Alex texted me and he said, check and see if the line is long. And I looked and like I was talking to this woman that worked there. People that work there are so nice. And I was like, hey, can you help me see? And I think maybe it's partly because I'm older, you know what I mean, too. Um, but they're so fun. They, like, dance the whole time. They're taking pictures and stuff. They're so sweet. So anyway, um, so this woman and I were, like, looking at this thing. She goes, no, I don't think the line's too long. So I texted Alex, and I said, come down. The line's not bad at all. So is he out of the shower? No. So he came down, and we, like, waited, like, five minutes. There was this couple behind me. I was talking to Tanya. I think I said this last night. Like, people always ask me, like, are you the oldest one in the festival? <laughs> Not at all. No, there's people that are like 10, 20 years older than me. And I was thinking about this because like the first year that we went, which would have been like 10 years ago, because I think we went in 2014, I was so weird about being like the oldest person there. And I was 41 at the time. There's like a lot, I mean, Alex is gonna be 40 this year. There's a lot of people that age there. There's a lot of people, I don't wanna stand in his underwear right there. There was a lot of people, um, that are like 60 to 70 year olds, like a lot, dancing the whole night. I mean, I live for it. I think it's so awesome, you know, that I've been going to it for like since it started on the beaches in Miami and stuff. And they go to music festivals all over the world. We talked to some of them, they're really nice. So anyway, um, the other thing that I was thinking about this tonight, I wanted to talk about this on my vlogs. I get this question every once in a while. And I, I've talked about it before, but like I know new people that uh, like haven't heard me. I, I, I don't talk about it a lot because I only usually talk about it when we go to music festivals. But, let me put a robe on. Is the food here already? No, I was like, okay. Um, people always ask me if the lights at music festivals bother me because of my epilepsy. So, the kind of epilepsy that I have, which is called juvenile myoclonic epilepsy, and it just means petite seizures. Um, that was what I was diagnosed with when I first got diagnosed with epilepsy. The kind that it has, I don't have what's called, I think it's called orbital distraction. I might be, I might be saying that wrong. But anyway, lights and things like that do not set off seizures for me. Um, so no, like the lights don't bother me at all. If I look right at them too long, they give me a headache because I have migraine disorder with my epilepsy. But you know, ever since I, if, I don't know what it is about them switching me from Depakote to Keppra, which was because of the pancreatitis, but ever, since I've been switched to Keppra, I've had less migraine. So I don't know, I haven't looked into it, I haven't asked my doctors if that's a side effect of Keppra that it like deals with migraine disorder, but I haven't really had as many migraines um, I, in the past, well, since I got used FaceTiming somebody. Where is he making it? Who is he FaceTiming? He's like laying down FaceTiming somebody. I don't know, but he's doing a video or something. He's like got the pillow up and he's got his, his feet up and stuff like that. <laughs> anyway, um, so, um, but yeah, so I don't have, like the, the light thing doesn't bother me at music festivals, concerts, movies, stuff like that. Um, every once in a while I'll like look away just because it like, it gives me like a, a migraine or a headache, but that hasn't happened this time. Um, and I haven't got, like, since they switched me to Kepra, I haven't really got as many migraines. I used to get them all the time. Uh, so, yeah, so that's, what was the other thing I was gonna, I was thinking of tonight that people ask about music festivals when I go? I don't know. Oh, maybe the food's here, because he's like getting out. <laughs> you can tell I'm really hungry. So, okay, we got up today, and it was raining all day long. They actually postponed the start of Ultra. It was supposed to open, I think, at noon. Oh yeah, here the food's here. Ultra was supposed to open at noon today, and it actually ended up opening at 4 o'clock. I'll vlog for a little bit longer. Um, when the guy leaves, I'll tell Alex. But they ended up opening at 4 o'clock today. We got out of bed. I stayed up late, because we knew that, I think they said yesterday they weren't opening until 4. Like, they put it up on their Instagram or something. I don't know. Somehow, we got a text message or something. Alex knew that it wasn't starting until 4 today. But we weren't even planning on going over there until 6, because we were going to leave at 6. And then the first person we wanted to see was that DJ Griffin that he liked. He was okay. I don't really care for him that much. He was fine. But uh, the younger the kids seemed to love him a lot. Um, oh, the other thing is the festival is 21 and older. So it's not like a real young, young festival. Um, just a second. I can't hardly even get this door open. 
This door is so heavy out here. Hey babe, I'm gonna vlog for just a little bit longer, okay? Carol ass. He's like, I'm gonna eat my cheese pizza. He got a cheese pizza and a Coke. He's like, I'm gonna eat my, I got a Beyond Burger. I wasn't going to. Last night I ate and I was like, I am so full. I shouldn't have eaten this. But okay, so today, I haven't really eaten anything today. Today we got up. So I stayed up late last night and I was gonna watch RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world, which I might watch it tonight and then go to bed because we're gonna go early tomorrow. Um, but I ended up watching Fellow Travelers. I'm now like on like, I think there's eight episodes. I'm on like the fifth episode. I was so bored of this show when I first started watching it. I think it's on Paramount if you want to watch it. Um, you know, it's interesting because like I checked a couple of my friends and they were like, yeah, there's like a lot of sex scenes at the beginning. Like it's really like there's a lot of nudity and whatever. No, there's not. I think this is interesting whenever I talk to like heterosexual friends of mine and there's gay scenes. It's like, and these are not like homophobic friends of mine at all, obviously, or they wouldn't be in my life. But like they, um, and I know people will take that and run with it. No, I mean, as a gay man, I'm not gonna have homophobic people in my life. I'm just not, sorry. Um, that's just a choice that I make today. I don't need to deal with that bullshit. <laughs> so that's where people will be like, oh, Peter doesn't let people that have opposite belief. No, it's when you believe that who I am is straight from the, the devil himself. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that stuff. So anyway, um, that's a decision I made a long time ago, you know? So uh, anyway, but it's interesting to me when I like talk to like, like straight friends of mine, and not just women either, like men too. Well, and I kind of guess I understand it, I don't know. But anyway, if there's like one sex scene with like gay guys in a, in a show or a movie, they're like, oh my God, there's so much sex. I watch that fellow travelers expecting there to be like, you know, ding dongs and ding lings and things, and there's not at all. I mean, yeah, there's some sex scenes in like the first episode and a half, but not like an over amount of it, not compared to everything else, other movies that I watch, you know? I mean, not compared to the most romance movies that you watch out there, it's nothing more than that. Um, so what this story is about, I don't wanna like, it's about these, guys, these two guys, it's Matt Bomer who is in it, I couldn't remember his name yesterday, but Matt Bomer plays the lead, and I don't know who the guy is that plays, the guy that he falls in love with, it's fantastic. And it, it's in 1952, I'm gonna make a whole video about it, either on my Peter Death Stuff channel, or maybe even on my drama channel, because I think it's important to talk about, I like, outlined some things I wanted to talk about. If I make videos this week on my drama channel and not a lot of drama pops off, it's gonna be like videos I've been like one about my sobriety, one about being gay and pride and things like that. This, this show like really, I don't know, it's just, you know I talk a lot about knowing our history and being so grateful for the men and the women that came before us and the LGBTQIA plus community, but I think it's really important and like I watch this stuff and it's like, I don't know, just government hearings about gay couples and being gay and then like losing your job and, and this is 1952 we're not that far away we're not even 100 years from that you know and um so anyway i started watching it so it's about these two guys that like are in love and like when it starts the one guy is married and it's like i think it's like 1982 or 86 it's been like 30 years which i was trying to put it together i was like so if they were like 25 to 30 at the time, which they'd have to be because they're out of college, they've been working for a couple years, so they have to be like late 20s, almost 30. If it's been like 30 years, they'd be like 60, but they don't look 60 at all at, the end of the, at the, when it's like the current time taking place. Maybe they're supposed to be like 55 or something, I don't know. But anyway, um, so the one guy, I'm trying, I don't, I'm trying to think of how early this happens. So. It opens with Matt Bomer being at his, like, home, and, and he gets this appointment, this government appointment, and this guy stops by and tells him that this guy, Tim, his name's Hawk, so Matt Bomer's name is Hawk in the show, and it, this guy Tim, who you assume right away was, like, his lover from, like, years ago, I hate that word lover, boyfriend, whatever, and uh, I don't know why I hate that word lover, I just feel like it minimizes... I think it sexualizes gay relationships, is what I've always thought. But I know people that use that word that are friends of mine, so use it, I guess. Whatever makes you happy. So anyway, um, but, it's underneath my foot, oh my god, 
on my wristband. <laughs> I thought I put it underneath my socks over here. So anyway, um, you find out that this guy, Tim, is dying to babes in San Francisco. And so it flashes back. And so the whole thing is between, like, current, like, him dying of AIDS and it going back to when they, like, had this relationship. It's fantastically done. It apparently was based on this book. I've never heard of this book before called Fellow Travelers. And it's really, really well done. And it's, it talks a lot about not just homophobia, but racism. A lot about racism and at that time. And, like, it's a lot about, like, Senator McCarthy and McCarthyism and things like that. It's really interesting from a historical point of view. It's not what I thought it would be at all. Like, when Alex was watching it, I thought, oh, this is, like, some gay love story, which it is, but to the backdrop of what was going on at that time, I just think it's really important that those stories are out there. So I watched that last night. I watched like two episodes. I'm on the fourth episode. Well, I finished the fourth episode, so I'm going to the fifth, sixth. Yeah, I've got four more. So I'm going to the fifth episode. And then after that, a lot of you guys, a couple of people DM'd me about it. And I think some person commented on it. And then, yeah, about this new show on Apple called Palm Desert, a Palm, Palm, Palm Royale. They said it's kind of like an old school, like White Lotus, but they said it's really good. It sounds like something I would want to watch. I think I'm going to watch that, and I also want to watch Apple's Mayfall. So I don't know, the true crime might take a break while I'm down here for a little while, and then when I get back, uh, probably tomorrow night after we get back, we'll probably watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, so anyway, so we got up today. We kind of lounged around for a little bit, and then Alex was getting hungry, and I wanted coffee, so I said, well, let's go. That was at, like, 2.30, I think, and we walked down the street, and I was like, do you just want to get something to eat at Starbucks, or do you want to sit down? He goes, no, I want to sit down somewhere, so we went to this place. I think Melissa and Jason actually went there last year, and it's called Bastille, and it's, like, this French restaurant. It's really, really cute. I took pictures of the food, put it on Instagram. I got, well, Alex got avocado toast with um, scrambled eggs. He said it was delicious, as long as a big, huge shower. All the bread there was like really thick. And then he got a mimosa, and then I got a cup of coffee, American coffee. And they had American coffee or espresso, those were your two options. I got a cup of American coffee, and then um, they had like water bottles on your table that were like, it's like Patashu does that too. But they were these really ornate, like antique kind of like glass bottles, they were very cool. And then I got Greek yogurt, but it came in like this glass jar and it had blueberries and granola and honey. They said there was honey in there. I didn't see it, but it you could taste it. And strawberries in it. And it was delicious. And it was perfect. It was all I needed today to get me through the day. But then towards the end of the night, I was like, I am so hungry. <laughs> like, I'm so hungry. The room service is so fast here. I can't believe it. I mean, I ordered the food like two minutes before I started vlogging. And they said 35 minutes, and I've been vlogging now for 23 minutes, so 25 minutes, and we've been here for like, you know, five or 10 minutes. That was really quick, don't you think? So anyway, yeah, we're having a great time. And then after that, we came back, and we took a shower. Oh, we got, then we went to Starbucks, and we got coffee. And I said, let's walk in front of the festival and see everybody I like going in early. So we walked in front of the festival, there was tons of people going in there early, and we could hear all the DJs and stuff like that. We came back, took a shower, well, I took a shower, Alex had taken one earlier. Last night, I think, did he, I think he took one he got uh, last night right before he went to bed or something. But anyway, I took a shower and then we got dressed and we went over to the festival and we had a great time. It was fun. It's been really fun this year. I miss Melissa and Jason, but it's been very, it's been very romantic. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> a lot of kissing at the festival. It's been real fun. Um, he's in there looking at all of his videos. That's what he's doing. He's looking at all of his videos he recorded for tonight. I, um, I will say one, I, I don't know if I said this last night, or if I said it to Tanya. I think I said it to Tanya on the phone, and then I said it in my vlog as well. But, so this is the thinnest I've ever been going to Ultra since 2014. This is the thinnest I've ever been. And I can tell a total difference this year. Like walking around, being able to dance, not being out of like breath really quick and stuff like that. Did I say that last time? It's unbelievable. The other thing is the wearing the comfortable shoes is a godsend. I'm never, I am not wearing, y'all know I am killing for wearing some stupid shoes. You know, I don't ever bring shoes that are going to give me blisters anymore. I've learned that lesson a long time ago. Holy sirens. Oh, they're all, there's like 10 cops in a row going somewhere. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. I bring, so I brought two pairs of leather Birkenstock. Well, I think one of them is vegan leather Birkenstock sandals are the ones that are camouflage. Then I brought my suede ones that I got last summer or spring or whatever. I actually wore those on the plane. And then I brought the black plastic pair. We always bring semi shoes, it's ridiculous. What is with all these sirens? That's a ambulance. So that's straight pairs of shoes. Then I brought my golden goose shoes because I didn't know if I was gonna wear those to the festival, which I'm not going to, and they are killing anyway. They're so uncomfortable. One pair that I have is really comfortable, but the other ones are not. But I brought the one that's the most comfortable, but even they're not that comfortable for a festival. And then I brought the Nikes. And then I bought, in case we bought, brought, um, the Gucci slides that I got a couple years, not slides, the leather, like, the mules that I got a couple years ago in Vegas, which have been lifesavers because they have no backs to them. So, like, that's my dress shoe of always now. Never gonna buy another dress shoe. Those ones. So, well, I mean, I did. Well, actually, those black Oxfords that I bought last year from Untamed Street that were real expensive, I have gotten so much wear out of those. I wear those all, like, when we go out to dinner, when we go to, like, party like Christmas parties we go to some event I always wear those but they're so heavy that to like pack them and bring them down here the Gucci ones are so like I got my money's worth out of those shoes that was a fantastic buy because I can wear them with no socks and we go out to something nice we're gonna go out to dinner one night um somewhere really nice so I'm gonna wear those but yeah and then we'll be home and then we'll be home so it's been a really great trip so far it feels like we've been down here forever. I mean, it feels like we've been down here for absolutely forever. So Alex is flipping over the TV right now. What's on TV? Prime Suspect Earth, Forensic Files, Dateline. He's gonna wait until it's some Marvel movie or something to watch. American Greed. I don't know what any of these movie shows are. What did he, uh, okay, I forgot to tell you this. He put it on Friends. So last night while we were eating, he put it on Friends. Now you know, when we go on vacation, he always makes me watch Friends, okay? Which is kind of our thing now, it's so cute. Because I never watched Friends back in the day. And the first time we did it was when we went to, where's the Disneyland in Anaheim in California, Alex had a convention there. So we started watching Friends there. When I came home, I was like, I'm gonna watch all the Friends so that I have some, because he loves, oh my God, he loves Friends. I'll, I remember dating this guy, the guy, the first time that I, the guy that I dated when I got out of treatment, he loved friends, and I remember he would come visit me, because he lived in Champaign, Illinois at the time, and he would come visit me, and he'd be like, okay, friends is on, can we watch friends first before we go out to dinner? I was like, are you serious? <laughs> but anyway, so Alex loves friends. I don't know which one this is. This is the beginning, because last night, it was the final three episodes. I finally saw the final episode of Friends last night. I saw it last night. I was crying. I was like, what is wrong with you? You don't even watch this show. I'm crying watching the final episode of Friends. And then they um, they started, the, then they, it started, like the show started again. I go, what episode are they doing? I thought that was the last episode. He goes, oh, this is the first one. So I saw the first episode too. So now I've seen the very first episode of Friends and the very last episode of Friends, which I think I'd seen the first one before because I did start watching it from the beginning. So when like all of their hair is completely different. Like I was kind of surprised about like Joey's hair and um, and what's the guy that passed away just recently? That was so sad. I was like, Matthew Perry. And I was like, I was like, it's so sad about Matthew Perry. It seemed like on the show and stuff like that. But anyway, Jennifer Aniston, literally, her hair is the only one. I don't think Jennifer Aniston's hair has changed in like 40 years. At the time that Jennifer Aniston got famous on Friends, all my friend, all my friends <laughs> from Friends, all my friends wanted Jennifer Aniston's haircut. And then like half of them still have it. <laughs> that was like the Dorothy Hamill when I was growing up. Everyone wanted that. I think I'm at like... 29 minutes and 30 seconds of us. Everybody wanted the Jennifer Aniston, not the Dorothy Hamlin anymore. Okay, I'm gonna get off here before this ends at 30 minutes. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And um, I don't know if I'll see you guys tomorrow night because I might just relax when we get back to the room after the last night of the festival. But if not, I will uh, 
and I don't, I'll see, we'll, hey, when we meet again, right? When we meet again. I love you guys so much, and it's gonna take me forever to upload, so I gotta get this inside. That's why I don't sometimes wanna upload so late, because it takes forever to upload it. Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next vlog. Bye.